In 1956, an international conflict erupted over the Suez Canal, a waterway in Egypt. The incident became known as the Suez Crisis. The crisis put the world on edge, rattling diplomatic relationships and culminating in a threat of nuclear war. Before we can look at the timeline of the Suez Crisis and its aftermath, we have to look at the history of the Suez Canal itself. The modern Suez Canal opened in 1869 when Britain controlled Egypt. The canal created an artificial waterway between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, making trade more convenient between Europe and East Asia. The Suez Canal was of great importance to the British because it connected much of their empire. So when Egypt achieved independence in 1922, the British took measures to ensure their control over the canal. In 1936, the Anglo-Egyptian Treaty was signed by Britain and Egypt, allowing British troops to remain in the canal zone until 1956. But things were changing in Egypt. Under the leadership of military officers, Egyptians deposed their monarchy, and Gamal Abdel Nasser became the country's new president. By 1954, Nasser started to pressure the British to end their military presence in the Suez Canal Zone. During the Cold War, Nasser's anti-imperialist agenda also gained him the approval of the Soviet Union's communist government and their leader, Nikita Khrushchev. In July of 1956, with financial and armed support from the Soviets, Nasser ordered Egyptian forces to seize the Suez Canal from the British and nationalize it which means he made the canal Egypt's public property. He believed the tolls Egypt could collect from ships passing through would fully finance a large new hydroelectric project on the Nile, the Aswan Dam. For the next few months, Britain, France, Israel, and the United States scrambled to figure out how to handle Egypt's takeover of the Suez. On October 29, 1956, Israel attacked Egypt. Israel wanted to resolve the Suez Crisis as well as reopen the Strait of Tehran, an important trade route Egypt had previously closed. Two days later, British and French forces also attacked Egypt and took control of the area around the Suez Canal. The situation quickly escalated. By November 5, 1956, Khrushchev threatened to nuke Western Europe if Britain, Israel, and France did not withdraw from Egypt. United States President Dwight D. Eisenhower warned Khrushchev not to get directly involved. At the same time, Eisenhower was furious that Britain, France, and Israel had kept the U.S. in the dark about this plan. He threatened the three countries with economic sanctions if they did not withdraw from Egypt. Britain and France withdrew by December. Finally, Israel bowed to U.S. pressure in March of 1957, bringing the Suez Canal crisis to an end. Though the Suez crisis lasted less than a year, its effects were profound and long-lasting. Immediately, a United Nations peacekeeping force was sent in to supervise the ceasefire and to restore order. The Suez Canal was cleared and reopened. British Prime Minister Robert Anthony Eden quickly resigned. The Suez crisis strained the relationship between the United States and Britain. But as Cold War allies and NATO, the countries continued to work together. Both Britain and France, though, saw their influence as world powers diminished. The Suez Crisis revealed who the real superpowers were in the world, the United States and the Soviet Union, a power structure that would stay in place for another three decades. <laughs>